So remember Google Glass? That sleek, overhyped little wearable that made you look like a tech cyborg from 2013 and made everyone around you deeply uncomfortable? Yeah, those glasses. Well, Google's back. And this time, they might have actually nailed it. At TED 2025, Google quietly revealed a prototype of its brand new AR smart glasses. And no, they didn't call it Google Glass 2.0, probably because they're trying to avoid that particular ghost from the past. But this new version, it's smarter, sleeker, and frankly, way more useful than anything they've done before. Today, we're diving into exactly what these glasses are, how they work, what they don't do, thankfully, and why they might actually succeed where the original flopped so hard it became a meme. So here's what Google showed off. A prototype that looks almost indistinguishable from regular glasses. That alone is a big deal. One of the major reasons the original Google Glass crashed and burned was because it made you look like you were filming everyone at brunch or starring in the next season of Black Mirror. This new version, it blends in on purpose. But it's not just about looks. These glasses are smart, like actually smart. They're powered by Google's Gemini AI, and what that means is you get real-time translation, visual search, memory assistance, and more without ever needing to pull out your phone. One demo showed a user having a conversation in Farsi and subtitles just popped up in front of their eyes, translating it in real time. Imagine that, you're traveling, someone speaks to you in another language, and you read their words like a real life subtitles track. No awkward fumbling with Google Translate or pretending you totally understood what Kili Mamnoon meant. Another feature called memory helps you remember where you left things or what someone told you hours ago. It's like having a photographic memory if your memory also happened to be run by a trillion dollar tech company. Now let's talk about how it works. Instead of trying to cram an entire computer into your temple like last time, Google made the glasses light and lean. The real processing happens on your phone, which stays in your pocket. The glasses are more of a display and sensor hub using a full color diffractive waveguide embedded in the right lens. Basically, the lens becomes a tiny transparent screen that overlays helpful visuals without making you feel like Iron Man on steroids. What you don't get is just as important. There's no creepy always on camera pointed at people, no awkward blinking controls, and no flashing lights that make people wonder if they're being live streamed at the grocery store. Google really seems to have learned from its past missteps. And that's probably the most impressive part. They didn't just build better hardware, they redesigned the experience to be less disruptive, more helpful, and way more human. Now to really understand how impressive Google's new direction is, we've got to zoom out and look at what everyone else is doing in the AR space. Because let's be honest, Google's not alone in this game anymore. In fact, they're jumping into a ring that's already pretty crowded with some heavyweight contenders. Let's start with Apple. Apple's Vision Pro is basically the opposite of Google's new glasses. Instead of subtlety, it leans into spectacle. You're not just slipping on a pair of specs, you're putting on a full-on ski goggle headset that looks like it was designed by NASA's marketing department. To be fair, it's an incredible piece of tech. You get eye tracking, hand tracking, spatial computing, ultra high resolution displays, and a price tag that politely asks for $3,500. But here's the thing, it's not really AR in the everyday sense, it's mixed reality something you use at home or in an office, not while walking around the grocery store or catching a flight. The Vision Pro wants to replace your MacBook. Google's glasses just wanna quietly tell you where your gate is and maybe remind you where you put your wallet. Different tools, different goals. And then there's Meta, who after lighting a few billion dollars on fire in the metaverse, has refocused its efforts on something much more promising, smart glasses. Their Ray-Ban Meta glasses, released in collaboration with Luxottica, are probably the closest comparison to what Google's doing, at least stylistically. They look like regular sunglasses can take photos and even let you talk to Meta's AI assistant, but while Meta's glasses are stylish and fun, they don't quite offer the same level of information overlay or contextual awareness that Google is pushing toward. They're good for snapping photos and getting quick voice answers. Google's trying to turn your field of view into an intelligent layer of information. Again, different philosophies. And then you have smaller players like Snap with Spectacles or Magic Leap still trying to figure out where they fit in all this. Spectacles are flashy but limited in functionality. Magic Leap was hyped to be revolutionary, but the price, size, and software ecosystem kept it in developer land for way too long. What we're seeing now is a shift in thinking. Instead of treating AR as a novelty or sci-fi experiment, companies are asking a more practical question. How can we make this genuinely useful without making people look insane wearing it? That's the space 
Google's new glasses are aiming for. It's not full-blown virtual worlds or replacing your desktop. It's assistive ambient computing, smart enough to help, subtle enough to forget you're wearing it. And maybe, just maybe, that's the version of AR that finally sticks. Now, if all this has you excited about AR glasses, but you're not exactly thrilled about waiting another year or two for Google's prototype to become available, good news. There are already some really cool options hitting the market right now, each with their own fresh take on the smart glasses formula. These aren't leftovers from five years ago. These are brand new releases, and they're finally starting to deliver on what AR glasses were always supposed to be. For example, the Xreal Air 2 Pros Pack big visuals in a discrete design. You get a floating 130 inch virtual screen in front of your eyes, great for watching movies, gaming, or basically turning your phone into a personal IMAX. And with dimming features that help cut glare and eye strain, it's one of the most polished AR display experiences out there. Or if you're a gamer, Lenovo's Gen 2 Legion glasses might be your pick. Lenovo built these specifically for gaming on the go. They plug right into your phone, laptop, or even a switch, and give you a massive 120 hertz virtual screen. They also have built-in speakers and a surprisingly good mic setup. Think about how these could make flights and bus rides an absolute breeze. And some other honorable mentions include the Xreal One, Rainio Air 3s, Vitra Pro XR glasses, and if you're interested, make sure to check out my XR glasses video where we cover these more thoroughly. So yeah, while Google's AR glasses might be the future, there are already some pretty futuristic options out there right now. Let me know in the comments, which of these would you actually wear in public? Are you waiting on Google's release or ready to dive into what's out now? If you found this breakdown helpful, drop a like and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the latest tech.